It, it will. <laughs> so L1, L2. Can you put those in real quick? So take your calculator out. Put those, the X values in L1, the Y values in L2, and then run the regression and uh, the linear regression and get the uh, equation. I'll do it with you. Getting 3.3 and 0.8, unless I messed up. Did you guys get that? Okay, good. So you're able to get that into calculators. What's that? So the X is what we're going to plug in when we predict things. We'll get to some of those. So for now, we don't need to do anything with the X. All you need is to write down the A and the B. They, that's all they want there. And then they want the scatter plot. Remember how to do the scatter plot? Just zoom nine. Yeah, as long as everything's set up on your scatter plot, like plot number one's on and set to the right graph, which we probably is from last time. So just hit zoom nine. And you'll get a quick picture. And, um, yeah, it's, it's D, isn't it? It's this one. So what do you think? So, so first off, is everybody good? Can I help? A um, line or is it not? No. It's curved. Huh? It's totally curved. Totally curved. So, um, yeah, the data has a pattern. Yeah, that is not a straight line. So there we go. That one's not very linear, is it? It's got some pattern that's not a straight line. We good on that? All is well? So we'll move on. This making sense? Homework. This is now question three because I cut out a couple of the questions. It was question five last night, but I cut out a couple of questions. It's number three in the 10.2, the new 10.2. The bare question's number three. Okay. Put the data in, you know, same kind of thing, L1, L2. Everything we did really last, I mean, Monday night was right, it's just we, the final thing, we didn't use enough decimals. That's what I figured out. So when, that's what confused me. So, all right, so when you look at the, a, oh, I just blew it. Oh, mine just went off my screen. Let me do it again. All right, there we go. Okay, so I'm getting an A value that is really negative 172. Point six four three um, four nine three eight. Are you getting that? Mm -hmm. And that's my A. So and then my B, my B value is eleven point oh eight. So here I got here. I'm gonna write it down here. So my A is negative one seventy two point six four three. Four nine three eight plus my B value, which is eleven point zero eight zero two one three nine x. So there's my actual equation with A and B. Now they want me to round the answers up here. They say round to one decimal. So this would be minus one seventy two point six. The other one would be eleven point one. They ask me to round, but then on the next question, they say, what is the best predicted weight of a bear with a chest size of 51 inches? That means they want me to take this 51, plug it in for x to my y equation. So let's hold up there for a minute, make sure I'm coming across clearly on all this. Are, are we good so far? Mm -hmm. Are you guys able to... Put in the L1, L2, hit the buttons to get these values for AB. So we have the first two, then we times it by 51. I'll show you why, yeah. But first off, we all get there. This is the A and this is the B rounded that come out on the screen, right, when you hit the buttons. Now, yeah, now what is that? That's an equation. This, this right here is an equation. It's the same as, as this equation. It's just I'm using all the decimal places. Does everybody see those equations are the same thing? Yeah. I'm just using all the decimal places. It's negative 172.6 plus 11.1x. Now, an equation is a, is a relationship between x and y. What is x? x is the L1 stuff. So these, this, this is x up here. This is y down here. x are the bear's chest sizes, different bears, and y, these are y values that are the bear's weight. We're, we're trying to say and see 
Is there a relationship between the bear's chest size and his weight? In other words, can you, it'd be nice if we had this, you can just measure around the bear's chest, they knock him out with the tranquilizer, they measure around the bear's chest, and then they know his weight. If there's a real clear, linear connection between the two, well, um, is there? Is there a linear connection between the two? What p-value did y'all get when you did this test? I already lost. Mine's off the screen. I'm going to have to get it again. Yeah, I thought that's what it was. Yeah, the p-value is 0 0.03. Yeah, I got a p-value 0 0.03, which is certainly less than 0 0.05, huh? Let me write it over here. So p is 0 0.03, which is less than 0 0.05. So that's strong evidence, right? That's strong, right? When the p is low, strong evidence. The, the null, the null is that there's... It's not, there, there's not a linear relationship. And the H1 is that there is a linear correlation. Remember, just like last time, right? The HO was there's not a linear relationship. H1 is there is. So if the P is low, then you reject the null. Strong evidence that there is a linear connection, right? The P, reject the null. Strong evidence there's a linear connection. P is low. Reject the null. Okay, are you tracking with this? This is going to become really important. Everybody hearing me on this? I mean, I know if you're off doing homework, you catch me on this because it's going to shift in the next problem. It's very different. So you do have to look at the P. That's part of what was tricking me also. You have to look at the P. If the P is low, reject the null, which means, yeah, we believe there's strong <coughs> evidence that these do have a linear relationship, bear, chest size, and weight. So that means you can use the formula. This equation is therefore valid. It, it's trustworthy. You can use it. There's strong evidence that this relationship is true. Okay, so what does this mean? This is a relationship between X and Y, which means you can plug in an X, a chest size, of those are X's, right? And plug it in, <coughs> multiply, you know, you know, minus that 172.6 plus 11.1x, but you're going to have to use these ones with more accuracy. And that'll give you a y. You can plug in a chest size and calculate a weight. <laughs> plug in an x and get a y. That's what that is. It's a relationship between y, which is a weight, weight, and x here, which is chest size. Right? The x values are the chest size. That's the x, and the y's are the weights. This is weight. So that's what, all, that's what we're doing in this whole section, is we're coming up with these linear equations, which are relationships between x and y. So we're trying to say, hey, do chest and weight, do chest size and weight have a linear relationship? The p value is low, so yes, they do. Okay, now what is the equation of that linear relationship? There it is, a plus bx. Now, they're saying, okay, use that to predict if a bear has a 51 chest size, 51 inches around his chest, what is going to be his weight? So we plug in the 51 for X. This is what we do every time. But what I got messed up on last time is I wasn't using enough accuracy. I used the, you know, the original <coughs> rounded ones, and that won't work. You have to use everything the calculator gives you. Pretty tedious. Actually, if you just use two places, it's good on this one. But... You know, just to be safe, use as many as you can. If you multiply that all out, somebody got that? What do you, what do you get? 392.4. Thank you. So 392, and they said one, one place. Before. Anybody else getting that same thing? Yep. yep. Okay, good. Good job, guys. So do you understand? We plugged in right here for X51 and took negative 172.643, 11.0802139 times 51. That's what they all did. And they got 392.4 pounds. So, a, so this equation predicts that a bear with a 51 inch chest size, ch around his, 51 inches around his chest, should weigh 392.4 pounds. Make sense? This is what we're doing in the whole section is getting these equations that connect two variables, these linear equations. Now, the actual weight of the bear, it turned out, they said, 
we were just predicting the weight, right? Then they actually weighed the bear, and it was 352 pounds. Now, how close? That's pretty far, isn't it? I mean, like, I don't know. I guess it kind of is. It's 40 pounds off of the real weight. So I guess it's sort of anybody's opinion, but um, the, it's, not, it's not very close to the actual weight of the bear. So for whatever reason, it didn't come out close. I don't know why. It usually will because we proved the p-value was low, so this is a faithful connection. It'll usually do better than that. We must have just got a weird bear. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what's going to happen now on the next problem? So we're going to do all the same stuff, but the p-value is going to come out high, which means you can't use the equation. When they ask you to predict because the p-value is high, that means the equation, although you can, the calculator will give you numbers for the equation, it will also tell you don't use this equation by giving you a high p-value. And so we won't use the equation. In that case, we'll just take the average of the values. So let me write that out for you. So here we go. So for a 10.2 regression, <coughs> there's basically two cases, and I'll put this on the board also, because this is the whole section is all about this. Number one, if the P is less than 0.05 or you know low, which is less than 0.05 or whatever, they give you some other significance level. If the P is low, you know we reject the null, of course. Reject the null, and that means strong evidence, or strong evidence for a linear correlation, linear relationship. They're correlated, they're related linearly. Okay, so that means you can use the y equals a plus bx. Plug in x and use that equation. That's what we just did on the bear problem. Right? We had a low p, so that means, yeah, there's strong evidence you can use the equation. We plugged in the 51 for x and got the number. That's what they want you to do, even though for whatever weird reason, it didn't, they said it wasn't close to the actual bear. In general, it'll work. In general, it's reliable. It's usually reliable. Case two. If the P is not low, notice it's not under 0.05 is what we usually mean by that, or whatever other significance level. If the P is not low, we do not reject the null. There is not strong evidence of a linear relationship. So not. So if the P is not low, that's going to be the next problem. If the P is not low, you do not reject the null. There's not strong evidence of a linear relationship. The calculator will still crank out the A and the B for you and give you an equation, but it'll also tell you, by giving you a high P value, that you shouldn't use that equation. <coughs> That, that, that line doesn't really connect A and B, the, the two variables. It doesn't really form a relationship with it. Well, then what do you do? How do you find the uh, Y value in that case? Find Y by finding Y bar, the average of the Y values. In other words, hit stat... Here's what we'll do. I'll tell you right on your calculator to make life easy here. Hit stat. Go, it's something we did a long time ago. It's been a while. Go over to the calc menu. Hit enter. And it'll, it'll say, it'll give you a message. One variable, one variable stats. And then you need to put in, here's the special thing, second two, which means L2 on the screen, and hit enter to get the Y value, the Y bar.
All right, let's give it a try. Let's give this a try. So this is going to be one of those where the uh, P will not be low. All right, a list of lower systolic blood pressure measurements in millimeter HG, uh, whatever that is, um, obtained from the same woman. Find the regression equation, letting the right arm blood pressure be the predictor. Find the best predicted systolic blood pressure in the left arm, given the systolic blood pressure in the right arm is 85. MMHG, millimeter, what's HG stand for? Whatever that is. Is it mercury? Okay. Uh, use is nucleus level 0.05. So, so the left arm's always higher? Is that it? Because that's where the, Ken was telling me, that's where the heart pumping straight. I don't know much about biology. So um, that makes sense, though. I believe anything you tell me. So the left arm's higher blood pressure. Is that right? I know somebody, Sean, you're nursing, right? You're a nurse? Is that true? Left arm's always higher? Not necessarily? Yeah, what if you have uh, peripheral disease or other... Oh, okay. But I mean just in a normal, regular? Uh, usually, okay. So anyway, so, there was, so we're taking the blood pressure, different blood pressure, same woman, right arm, left arm, right arm, left arm, right arm, left arm. So let's put this in um, L1 and L2 and see if we can use the blood pressure in one arm to predict the blood pressure in the other. You know what I mean? We're seeing if there's a linear relationship between right arm, left arm, blood pressure. And hopefully I didn't hit anything wrong. I got um, a p-value. I don't know what did I get here. I got a p-value that is 0 0.07997. And they told me to test at 0 0.05. So that's greater than 0 0.05. The p is not low. Right? Y'all getting that? Thank you. So the P is not low. There's not strong evidence of correlation. So I'm going to write down the A and the B here. The A and the B. But I'm not going to use it. They want me to round to one place. So I'll write it down. 52.0. And the B is 1.1. But I'm not going to use those. Because that equation is not reliable. There's not strong evidence that there's a linear connection between right arm and left arm blood pressure in the same person. So, well then, how like it says, given that the systolic blood pressure in the right arm is 85, the best predicted blood pressure in the left arm is, how am I going to predict the left arm if I'm not going to plug into this equation, I'm just going to give them the average. Does that make sense? In other words, if the equation's not reliable, then you can't rely on it. So if somebody says, hey, what's the best predicted... See what they're asking? Best predicted blood pressure in the left arm. You just take these left arm numbers... And you just give the average. There's nothing else you can do. Am I, am I making any sense at all? I'm always hoping to make the system not just teach you how to push the buttons, but make it really seem reasonable. In other words, I can't use the equation because the equation is not reliable. There is not strong evidence that there's a linear connection between the two. So we just can't use that equation. Well, then what do, so if somebody asked me, hey, I just went and took, the, or the woman just went and took her blood pressure, left arm, what's your guess as to what it came out to be? What's your prediction? Well, I'm, all the only thing we could do is just average all the other times she did her left arm, because we have no other thing to help us. Does that make sense? It's kind of a lame result in the end, really. You get what we're doing? We're just saying... Well, well, we don't have any other evidence of anything. So if she's doing her left arm, and you want me to predict what it might come out to be, just take the average of all the other times she did her left arm. That's all we're doing. Does that make sense? That seems, it's kind of lame, but so somewhat reasonable. Is times all of them and then divide by five? No, Adam, 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 right. Which your calculator will do it for you automatically. You don't have to do it by hand. That's what I'm saying. You can just hit stack, calc, enter, it'll do it for you. But you're right, Eddie. That's, that, that's what it's doing. That's exactly what it's doing. It'll add these up. But notice they're in L2. So that's why we've got to do the uh, stat calculations for L2.
But yeah, if you want, you can just add them up by hand and divide by five. It's, that's what it's doing for us. We're just getting the average of all the other times she did her left arm. So the list will be L2, the frequency list will be... I think it's L2 as well. Did that work with both L2? Yeah, I think it's both L2. So if, if, if the uh, P is low, you use A plus B X. Right. If P is high, you get the average of the L2. Exactly. You get that. That's a good summary of what that says. Exactly. So I'm getting 155.4. One fifty-five point four. Is that what y'all got? That's the average. That's just the average of those left arm numbers. That's the best we can predict. It's just kind of lame. Will it always be L two? Yeah, they're always going to be asking for L two. Yeah, because X. Yeah, right. It always will be. I I heard what you said, and when I put the answer, it said it's wrong. Pretty much. I understand the the deal then. If the P is if the P is not low, we just do the average. If the P is low, we plug in to the equation. Right? Because if the P is low, the equation is reliable. And we use it. And we plug into it. But if the P is not low, there's not strong evidence for a linear relationship. So we can't use equations. So we just take the average. It's the best thing we can do. It's kind of lame. We just say average. All right. So we good? Show Let's try this one. This is actually problem number five in the homework. So problem number five, best actor, best actress. So you want to put that in? L1, L2, got some numbers there. Let's try again. Go through our p-value, all that kind of stuff. Okay, I cranked it out. I got a p-value, my p-value came out 0.223, that is way not low, 22% chance of just luck, so that's way not low, so the p is not low, there's not strong evidence of a linear relationship, there is not strong evidence of a linear relationship. So I'm not going to use the equation again. I'm going to write down the A, rounded to one decimal place, as they say. 53.3 and negative 0.219, so 0.2. You guys getting that one okay? And so if, if there's not strong evidence of a linear relationship, then I'm not going to use the linear equation. What am I going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to find the average of L2. Right? They want best actress. Well, I'm, um, they want the best actor. So they want, um, so they want L2. They want the average of L2, so I'm going to hit stat, go over to calc, and do L2. So stat, calc, one variable, L2. I'm getting the average is 45 point, I don't know how many places they want, whole number, 45.4. So that would just be rounded to 45. 45. We okay there? Is that what y'all are getting? Good. Sounds good. And then they ask, is that within five years of the actual best actor who was 39 years old? Not quite. Close, but not quite. So we say no. The predicted age is more than more than five years greater than the actual winner's age. So this is L1, L2. Oh, yeah, this is actually, it's not nine. It's actually question six. Thanks. It's actually question six on the new homework. Chirps for temperature. All right. Let's do it. put the data in. 
I got a p value of 0.0133. That's a pretty low p. The p is low. So the p is low. So there's strong evidence for a linear relationship, huh? Strong evidence that cricket chirps and temperature have a linear connection. So, all right, so they want me to write down the A and the B. And I'm going to use it this time, aren't I? The A rounded to, oh, four decimal places. Okay. Seven, they want, also, they want four decimal places. 17.5137. And the B is 0.0621. So, and then I'm going to use all the accuracy down here. 17.513663 plus 0 0.062122104. X. So there's all. So remember, you've got to use all the decimal places when we're going to use it. So, uh, so there's strong evidence of a linear relationship. So we plug in x to the linear equation. We, we use it. When there's strong evidence of the linear relationship, we use it. What is the x? 3,000 chirps. So plug in x equals x equals 3,000 right there. So plug in 3,000 right there. Hit the buttons on your calculator. I'm getting, when I do all that, I get a y value of 203.88. Oh, 0.9, yeah, I want you to round in one place, yeah. 203.9. 203.9, did y'all get that answer? Is that coming out? Am I racing ahead of you? Questions I can answer. Are we good to there? I want you to keep, keep trying to keep real. It's all real. What, 203.9 what? My old, my old physics teacher, he would say, what is that, Heron? 203.9 dogs? It was always dogs for him. Dogs in the kennel? What is that? Degrees, degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, degrees Fahrenheit. <coughs> so it's 203 degrees outside. What's going on? <laughs> That's, yeah, is that very realistic? No, it is unrealistically high. Now, why? Why did it come out so... I thought there was strong evidence that this was a linear relationship. Let me explain to you. There is. There is strong evidence of a linear relationship here. But that linear relationship only exists in a certain zone. That's what they're showing you here. Do you see? Look at, look at the cricket chirps. What was the most chirps we recorded in the sample data? About 1,000, a little over 1,000, 1,200, you know? Now we're talking 3,000? That's way out of the zone. So you can't use sample data, form an equation, and then plug in something that's way out of that zone. It's, it doesn't predict things far out of the zone. It's just useful for predicting things somewhat in the region from which the sample data came. Does that make sense? So 3,000 chirps, that's, that's too far away. So the value 3,000 is far outside the range of observed values. So that's one thing you always got to keep in mind. When you're using sample data to make a prediction of something with statistics, it's only going to be true for reasonable numbers, numbers that are in the range that you originally had. How are we doing? Is that good? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this section behind us, I think, if we're, if we're good there.